Yeah, so, I wanted to create a video that would break down the basic process for 3D modeling something for games. Um, because I love talking about what I do, uh, but no one really understands what I'm trying to tell them whenever I start talking about it. Um, and I think that 3D modeling is super easy to understand once someone shows it to you. Uh, like, I think I could teach a middle schooler how to 3D model for video games, so I figure... This is just a good way to sort of show what you do when you're trying to make something uh, for games. Uh, what I like to start with is in ZBrush, which is the program I have open right now, um, it basically gives you digital clay to sculpt with, which is really nice. Um, it's best for whenever you're doing stuff that's like organic, uh, because it's a little bit harder to get like hard surfaces. Um, but it's very, very good for anything organic, like characters, creatures. In this case, I'm making a little Netsuke, which are uh, these sort of samurai phone charms that would go on their little box bag things that they would have. Uh, it's a little ivory bead. They're super cute. And I thought that he would be a good, simple example model to work with. Uh, what I'm making right here is called the high poly model, uh, which is named because there's a lot of polygons. As you can see up there at the top uh, right, there's this thing called active points and total points. That's how many uh, vertices I'm working with, which are just dots in space that the computer is using to construct the 3D model. Um, and in ZBrush, you tend to be working with a lot more vertices than you would be with any other program. Uh, it allows you to make these very detailed, very pretty sculpts, uh, but they're not very good for video games or animation or anything like that because there's so much detail going on there that the computer is just upset. Um, computers don't like a lot of polygons. Like That's one of the reasons why if you have like an old computer and you try to run a current era game, you're going to have a lot of problems. It's just that as computers get better, the amount of polygons we try to put on a screen gets higher, but uh, ideally you want as few as possible to create the prettiest possible model. Um, but we still create the model that I'm doing right here, these high resolution ones, because you can create the low poly model from the high resolution ones, and then you can put that detail back in uh, using these things that are basically cheating called normal maps, which you'll see later on in the video. But yeah, as, as you can see, it's just like regular sculpting, only done with a mouse. <laughs> And, of course, you don't have to deal with the problems of, like, fingerprints or mushing one side to get something right only to have the other side mush. Um, so I personally like it better. And you can see I'm masking off the mouth here because I don't want to move the other stuff. And that's also a major plus. Uh, one of the downsides, though, that traditional sculpting doesn't have is because it's made... I'm basically moving a bunch of polygons around in 3D space, and if it doesn't give me enough polygons to work with, you have the problems that I'm having with the teeth here, where the point just doesn't want to happen. Like, it's just getting more and more upset with me. I get it to an, like, a sort of passable, and then I just, it, it because I'm going to be baking this information to a low poly, there's a certain level of uh, messiness that I don't I don't think shows up that much, so I just sort of let it happen after a little while because this guy, he's not the most important model in the world, and I'm cool with that. Um, as you see here, I just dragged in a circle, and now I'm sculpting that into Tusk. ZBrush is lovely because it lets you have uh, basically layers in sculpting like you would in like Photoshop, um, and they're all separate, and I'm allowed to like zhuzh it without having to worry about the rest of the model. Especially when you uh, are sculpting in real life, if you like roll out a piece of clay and get it to look the way you want and then you stick it onto the sculpture you're doing, it's the same sort of idea. Fixing up those spikes. Those spikes looked good in the uh, drawing, but they were kind of hard to get into 3D space, which is a problem that happens a lot whenever you're working from a 2D reference. Waiting for the autosave there. Gotta love the autosave. The other favorite thing about ZBrush is 
if you see at the top, there's a slider called see-through that allows me to just make the window see-through so that I can uh, sculpt on top of whatever reference image I want, which I love. There's ways that you can put reference images in pretty much every 3D modeling software that I've worked with anyway. Um, but ZBrush is the easiest because it's just a slider. Like, you don't have to import anything. You just slide, fix whatever you're modeling, and then go back to work. Jizzing him up. There we go. See, love that see through option. And I just dig in the eyes. Just more zhuzhing. Once you get the basic shape down, it's just sort of wiggling polygons into place. Fixing things up. It's sometimes hard because if you don't look at every angle, you'll find that there's like some really weird part of your model. Like there's been times where I've done stuff where I'm just looking at one side and then I turn it around and I'm like, oh my god, this very great model is very terrible. Now I'm preparing it to decimate, which is basically, right now there's like a hundred thousand points and I'm dropping it down to 20,000 just like that um, that's just an automatic function of ZBrush which is great because if it had a hundred thousand points I wouldn't have been able to bring it into Maya like I did just then because Maya would have exploded um, now I'm doing the retopo process which is basically I use the big model as a base to draw polygons on top of it um, in order to make a smaller model which is way better than like sculpting the low poly thing from scratch, in my opinion. Um, basically, yeah, I just, you draw quads and tries all over everything. Uh, you never want to draw anything. Like, you, when you're doing a 3D model for video games, especially, you don't want anything that has more than four sides uh, because computers hate those. I don't know why computers hate those, but. Uh, when it comes to retopologizing things, basically I'm doing everything to make computers happy. Uh, I'm making it lower poly so that things run faster. I'm making everything twi tries and quads so things render properly. I don't have to know why that makes things better. I just gotta do it. <laughs> Fixing up some problems with it. Getting in those tusks. There we go, and then I export that out and bring it into Substance. I also uh, unwrapped it in between there, but that video didn't want to um, be included. I did a bake and then realized that the tusk was baking into the face and it was making things look ugly, so I had to re-export it without the tusk. And now I'm baking it again. Basically what a bake does is it takes the high poly information and it puts it on your low poly model, which is really good because, as you can see, this pig has teeth, but the low poly model uh, just has like a bent plane right there. Basically, your goal with the low poly model is to just get the silhouette, and then the bake comes in and adds in all of the details and it bakes it to uh, the texture seat that you can see on the uh, right there. Uh, which is just an unfolded 2D image, which is a lot easier for the computer to handle. Right now I'm just trying to use uh, Substance is a great tool because it lets you sort of use a bunch of different filters and uh, special tools to put in detail for you. Um, and I'm just trying to get it to look like the ivory. As you can see, I'm using a bunch of filters. Uh, the filters will sort of put in dirt in the edges, which is very nice. Now I'm trying to put in the fur that was on my original drawing, uh, but did not translate well to 3D. Um, so I found a reference Netsuke that had similar fur patterns, and I just used that instead because it worked a lot better. Um, I'm also using, there's a cool feature of Substance that lets me paint in height information as I'm painting. Uh, so it digs in the etching for me, um, and it's using the same thing that the bake does to uh, these things called normals that um, uses color information and a bunch of other stuff to make things 
uh, the computer renders things as though they have depth that's not actually there. Uh, this is the normal map. As you can see, it looks wacky, uh, but that's the color information. I'm just fixing up some of the problems in the bake because it tried to bake the ear onto the body. <laughs> there we go. Now that's fixed. I'm bringing things into Marmoset. Marmoset is basically uh, just a rendering engine. So it just gives me some lights and other nice things. As you can see, I'm playing with the lights. He's using some things, looking at him, seeing if he looks nice. Adding more lights. And there's my piggy. There's my little piggy neck 2K. Start to finish, not that complicated. Um, so hopefully if you didn't know how to 3D model before, now you have a better sort of idea of what it's like to create something for video games.